information to help you run your business better and improve your marketing campaigns. My name is Hank Hoffmeyer, and thank you for joining me on Hank's Marketing and Business Tips. This is episode 273 of the HMBT podcast. I recently posted on LinkedIn where I wanted people to share their challenges and changes that happened to them during the last few years because of the pandemic. The pandemic has affected everyone positively, negatively, and in ways that maybe some people can understand or comprehend. I've seen people fail hard. I've seen people see the pandemic as opportunity and they flourished. I recently just saw a post from someone in my network and I asked them to share their story because it's exactly what I'm looking for. The sad thing is I had so many people say that they wanted to participate in this project and I was going to turn it into a YouTube video, kind of like a mashup going back and forth between the different speakers that shared their stories. I did have one person so far reach out, Jennifer Nispola Lance with Kickbox, co-worker of mine through Ziff Davis, and she got in front of the camera and recorded. I appreciate the fact that she was courageous enough to get in front of the camera to share her story. I'm going to shut up now and let Jennifer tell her story, and I hope that this might encourage someone that's listening to want to participate Simply reach out to me and we'll figure out a way to record it. Or if you want to record something and send it to me, we'll work all of that out. And if I get more content through this reach out or from my LinkedIn post, I'll add those as another episode. I look forward to creating some more episodes and I'll see you soon. But first, listen to what Jen has to say. Hi, my name is Jennifer Nespola Lance, and I am the VP of Deliverability and Industry Relations at Kickbox. You can visit Kickbox at kickbox.com, and you can follow us on Twitter. You can follow myself on Twitter as well um, at email delive by Jen. How has the pandemic changed me? I would say that it started a lot of bad habits, some of which have led to burnout. But I don't think I'm alone there. And I think when you think about this for business or personal, there just has been a lot of stress overall about what to do, how to make ends meet. Truth be told, one of the worst behaviors, which is really one I've struggled with for much longer than the pandemic, but the pandemic really sealed it in, is not being able to peel off of work and not knowing how to do it. I think that's the worst part. Then from that there was a trickle down effect or i should probably say a waterfall effect <laughs> and everything else in life in retrospect i think a lot of what drives people be it good or bad is fear unfortunately but it is understandable and i think that is what leads to sometimes very good habits and sometimes habits that need to be altered however there is sunshine and sometimes a rainbow after a storm. So although I may not have changed in an entirely positive way, I have been doing a lot of thinking and I have some thoughts on what businesses and individuals can think about moving forward and in ways that we can shift it so it is a, a positive change if you're not quite there yet. So first, my sister always tells me, give yourself some grace. I'm not very good at this, but it's true. We're all human and no one is perfect. But on a regular day, there's this pressure to perform and the pandemic has amplified it in so many ways for businesses and for individuals just trying to stay afloat. And for those who have lost maybe some of their sources of income, we're all in this together, whether we want to be or not. And we had to adapt when it hit and we're going to have to adapt again as we return to whatever normal will be. Two, unplug. I'm not very good at this either. But it's important for yourself, your family, and others. Burnout is real, and it helps no one. And kids, if you have them, they grow like weeds, and you don't want to experience that from behind a screen. And they still need to be groomed, or you'll end up with this wild-looking backyard. Unplugging can also mean helping your employees reboot. They are the face of your company and for your customers. So 
The last thing you want for their well-being and the well-being of your business is an interaction that leaves both parties unhappy. Three, make small changes. They add up. Again, this doesn't have to be just for individual change, but businesses can make small but impactful changes. Something as simple as documenting meeting notes or utilizing Zoom for team gatherings or giving each other, uh, giving each team member a specific goal to accomplish that day. And if you have a big idea, sometimes just taking the first step, like creating a mock-up, will help you get to the second step, the third step, and so on, until you have something greater than what you started with. Four, start with awareness. I'm actually pretty good at this. Reflect on what is working and what isn't. And in the same vein as the first tip, applaud yourself and your teams for what you have accomplished. Don't forget that. Reflection can be hard, but it's the best way to improve. Thomas A. Edison said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. Five, find out what needs to be broken and break it. This one is hard. I'm still working on it. It can be easy to find what needs to be broken, but it's not always so easy to break it because change is hard. Finally, find time for yourself. Get away. The body follows the mind, but sometimes you need to lead with the body to give your mind a nice little kick. Even in business, sometimes just speaking with other teams and not dealing with your day to day can help free the mind and think about ways to do things differently. So that's it, I think. Hopefully you found this useful and that's it. Thank you.